Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to the sixth lesson in analytical geometry. I don't know why it says analytical. I apologize. So we're going to carry on by doing some questions on analytical geometry. Um, the first question, well, first question we're going to do today, we're going to do quite a few. Um, I've sourced quite a number of really nice, I think, yeah, really nice Grade 12 um, coordinate or analytical geometry questions. Um, and I think the best thing to do with this type of section, with any type of maths, what the idea would be is to learn your rules and make sure you understand the theory, um, what little theory there may be, but in this case it would just be the how to use your formula. And then to just go through lots of exam paper questions and apply, 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 practice and practice and practice. Okay, so let's go through it. It says in the diagram, line AB, AB, is parallel to line CD. Okay, so line AB, just trying to find my mouse, there it is. Line AB, it's gone again, hang on, I can get it back. Where is it? Where is it? It's disappeared. There it is. Line AB is parallel to CD, which they tell us. I'm sorry, I'm still a little bit sick, hence the groggy voice. Okay, um, so what do we know? We know that if they're parallel, what do we know about their gradients? We know that their gradients are the same, okay? It says CD makes an angle theta with the x-axis and angle BCD, BCD is 42 degrees. And just because we're so clever, we know that this is also 42 degrees. I'm not sure if we're going to need that or not, I'm just telling you. And the reason we know that is because these are alternate angles. I don't know if I need that yet. I'm just putting it in there from what I've read. It says A is minus 6, 6 and B is 2, 8. Okay. First, the thing says is calculate, determine the gradient of CD. Okay, determine the gradient of CD. Okay, it's only for two marks. But do you agree that the gradient of CD is the same as the gradient of AB because they are parallel? So we can use the gradient formula, which says M is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So let's call this point 2 and this point 1. So it becomes 8 minus 6 over 2 minus minus 6. 8 minus 6 is 2 over 2 plus 6 is 8, which is a quarter which we write as 0, 0,25 if you want. So the gradient of CD, MCD, is equal to 0, 0,25. Okay, now it says they want the gradient, the size of angle theta, correct to one decimal place. Okay, well that's pretty easy because on your formula sheet you will see that tan theta is equal to M. Okay, and we know what M is. M is 0, 0,25. Therefore, we know that tan of theta is 0, 0,25. Therefore, theta is going to be second function of 0, 0,25. So we're going to go shift tan. Let's try again. So let's go back to that. And then let's get out our calculator. And we're going to go shift tan of 0, 0,25 equals 14.04, 14.04. So theta is equal to 14,04 degrees, 14,04 degrees. Okay, so therefore we know that this is 14,04 degrees. Now they say the gradient of BC, aha, so we didn't really need to use that 42 degrees, but we do need the 42 degrees here because they want the gradient of BC. Okay, they want the gradient of this line here. But we can work out what the whole of this angle is. The whole of that angle is 42 plus 14,04 which is comma zero four six five. It's 56.04 degrees. So the whole of this angle is 56.04 degrees. So again, we're gonna use the fact that tan theta 
is equal to m. But this time, we've got theta. We've got theta is 56.04 degrees. So we're going to go tan of 56,04 degrees is equal to m. Therefore, m is equal to tan of 56.04. No, let's try again. Zero. Zero four close bracket equals one point four eight. So the gradient is one comma four eight. And we're happy with that because it's definitely steeper than C D, which was 0.25. And on top of that, it's still positive. So that looks like a good number. Okay, always check your answers to make sure they make sense. Okay, happy with that. Right, so that was quite a nice question. Pretty easy, hey, it was a nice little introductory. Let's get your brains going in analytical geometry. Now let's get to something a little bit more complicated, a little bit more. Okay, it says, in the diagram below, a tangent is drawn to the circle at a point minus three, six. Okay, the equation of the tangent is two y minus x minus 15. Okay, so that is the equation for this tangent. But what do we know? We know that the tangent is always perpendicular to the radius. Okay, just pointing it out there. And I'm not sure where the center of the circle is. It's, it's a term in the equation of the straight line that represents the diameter of the circle. Okay, there you go. Which emanates at the point of contact P. So in other words, they want the equation of this line here. They want the equation of that diameter. So we do need to know that that's 90 degrees because we're going to be using it. Okay, so the first thing you need to think about is if we want the equation of a straight line, the equation for a straight line is y is equal to mx plus c. So we need to determine the gradient and we need to determine where it cuts the y-axis, where it cuts the y-axis, okay, which is point c. So now, the first thing that we're going to do is use what we've got. And the first thing that we've got is the equation of this tangent. So it's 2y is equal to minus, uh, sorry, plus, okay, let's try again. I'm just going to rewrite the equation first. Sorry. So we've got 2y minus x minus 15 equals 0. So 2y is equal to x plus 15. Therefore, y is equal to a half x plus seven and a half. Okay, and the only thing we're interested in in this equation is that thing there, the gradient. Because that is the gradient of this line. m is equal to a half, right? Now, what do we want to do? We want to use that to get the gradient of the diameter. So we're going to use that to get the gradient of the diameter, which I'm changing to be purple, okay? We know that M1 multiplied by M2 has to equal minus one if the lines are perpendicular. Now, this is where I said about learning your theory. You need to know that the tangent is always perpendicular to the diameter or the radius. So if you know that, you know that you need to use this formula to get the gradient of this diameter. So M1 is a half, so we've got a half multiplied, oh, just in a second, erase. A half multiplied by M2 is equal to negative one. Oopsie, sorry. Therefore, you've got M2 is equal to negative one divided by a half. But when you divide, what do you do? You tip in times. So M2 is equal to minus one times by two over one, which is going to be negative two. So the gradient of this is negative two. M2, the gradient is negative two. So therefore we know that for the diameter, Y is equal to negative two X plus C. And now we need to find out where it cuts the Y axis. So we need a point. And luckily for us, this point P is common both on the tangent and on the diameter. So we can substitute this point into this value here and get out C. So 6 is equal to minus 2 times by minus 3 plus C. That's interesting. 
So therefore we've got that 6 is equal to 2 times 3 is positive 6 plus C, so therefore C is equal to 0. So this does in fact go through the <coughs> 0 point. So this does actually go through the 0 line. Um, no, a minute. So it goes through like that. That does not mean that the 0 is actually the center of the circle. It just means that it goes through the zero point. Okay, therefore the equation for the diameter is y is equal to minus 2x. That is it. y is equal to minus 2x. Okay, good. Let's try another question. It says, in the diagram below, two circles touch each other internally at k minus 6 minus 3. So they just touch each other at that point there. Okay. The small circle has center R. Okay. And the big circle, M is the center of the large circle. Okay. Um, and lies in circumference. T is minus 2, 9 and K is 6 minus 3. Our end point of the diameter of the large circle. The diagram is obviously not on scale. It says show that R is 4 naught. Okay. Right. So do you agree that M is the midpoint of um, TK? So do you agree that we could get the midpoint of TK, then we'd have M. So let's do that. M is going to be the midpoint. And what do you do with the midpoint? You add the midpoint formula is X1 plus X2 over 2, Y1 plus Y2 over 2. Okay, which equals minus 2 plus 6 over 2, 9 plus minus 3 over 2. Minus 2 plus 6 is 4 over 2. 9 minus 3 is 6 over 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So M is 2, 3. M is 2, 3. Now we need to get R. So why did I work out M first? Well, because we know that M is on the circumference of the circle and R is the center of the circle. So some of you might have thought, well, if I divided this by four, then surely I would have got R. Maybe, but you could also have got this point up here. The whole point about the midpoint is it's exactly halfway between X and Y, which is why you get it. Okay, so now we want to find what R is. So R is, okay, R is now the center of this point, okay? It's the midpoint from M to K. So now M, R is going to be 2 plus 6 over 2, 3 plus minus 3 over 2. 2 plus 6 is 8, divided by 2 is 4. 3, we know that that's 0 anyway, but just to prove it. 3 minus 3 is 0, divided by 2 is 0. So the midpoint of R, or the R, is going to be the point 4, 0. And how nice is this they've said to show that R is 4, 0? Okay, they're not particularly being nice. The reason they need to show you that is because you need to be able to use it in this bit. You need to be able to use R is 4, 0 in the bit where it says determine the equation of the circle with center R. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be determining the equation of the circle with center R. Awesome. So, like I was saying, and I've said before, in, actually I can just erase all the writing. Um, as I've said before, you can actually use this. So even if you couldn't show that R is 4, 0, you can use that in determining the equation of the circle with center R, okay? Since we now know that that's 4, 0. And even if you determine the R value and it's not what they suggest. So let's say, for example, you're convinced that they've messed up and it's not that. So they said 3, 0, okay? It doesn't matter. Always use what they gave you in the next part of the question. Okay? Just in case. 
Right, so now we need to determine the equation on the circle. Now, the circle is not centered on the origin. So the equation for it is going to be x minus 4 squared plus y minus, and I'm writing it in just so you can see what I'm doing, squared is equal to r squared, which is obviously x minus 4 squared plus y squared. I don't know why I'm putting it in a bracket. Um, sorry, where was it? There we go. Uh, plus dark, dark one. Plus y squared is equal to r squared. Okay, awesome. Now we need to work out what r squared is. So what we need to do is substitute a point that's on the circle. And we happily do have a point on the circle that is going through the little circle. It is point k, which is 6, negative 3. So we've got 6 minus 4 squared plus minus 3 squared is equal to r squared. Okay, so 6 minus 4 is what? 6 minus 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4 plus minus 3 squared is 9 and that's equal to r squared. So therefore you agree that 13 is equal to r squared. Now guys, you have to be careful. You have to leave it as r squared. The formula is r squared. Now when it's 13, it's pretty obvious that you need to leave this as 13. But sometimes I find that if r squared equals 25, then a lot of my students write 5 here. Instead of realizing that within the equation, it has to be r squared. So therefore, the final equation of the circle is x minus 4 squared plus y squared is equal to 13. There you go. So please be careful, this has to be r squared. Okay, next question. Right, so this is a nice question. Um, it's just a bit different, that's why I like it. It says O, A, B, C is a parallelogram. So what do we know? We know that that is parallel with that, and we know that that is parallel with that, and we won't even talk about the length of sides at the moment. O is the origin and lies on the y-axis. B, O, C, B, O, C is 23.39. So that little angle there is 23.39, okay? It says, find the coordinates of M, the point where the diagonals of the parallelogram intersect. Well, where that is, is the midpoint of OB. So M is the midpoint of OB. Okay, so that's another piece of theory you need to learn. You need to learn that the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. They bisect each other. They are not necessarily equal in length, but they do cut each other in half. Okay, <clears throat> so M is the midpoint of OB. O happens to be 0, 0. Don't forget that. So we're going to go M, and just in case you've forgotten the formula, it is x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. In grade 12, these formula are on your formula sheets. So there's no reason why you should get them wrong. You do not have to memorize them. So M is equal to, and I'm going to call this point 1 and that's point 2. It really doesn't matter, as I keep saying, which point you call what, as long as you don't get confused between the X's and the Y's, okay? In this case, it doesn't really make a difference because both the X and Y and this point is 0, but it would make a difference if they had different values. So we've got 0 plus 4 over 2, and then we've got 0 plus 7 over 2. What's 4 divided by 2? Well, it's 2. What's 7 divided by 2? It's 3 comma 5. 2 and 3 comma 5. So therefore, this point here is at 2, 3 comma 5. Now it says calculate angle B, O, X. They want the angle B, B, O, X. They want the whole of that. Okay, well, do you agree? I just want to get that in a different color so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so we want the whole of BOX. Do you agree that if I have the gradient of <clears throat> BO, then I can use tan theta to equal, that equals M. I could use that. So if I've got the gradient of OB, 
then I can use this formula to find the whole of that angle. So let's do that. So the first thing we need to do is work out that gradient. Now some of you for some reason might use M and B. I am going to make my life so much easier. I'm just going to use B and O. So the gradient M is going to be Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And again, I'm going to call this point 2. So it's going to be 7 minus 0 over 4 minus 0, which is 7 over 4. And let's just leave it like that. So that's the gradient, okay? If I'm then substituting to here, you've got tan of theta is equal to 7 over 4. So therefore, theta is equal to the second function of 7 over 4. Let's get out our calculators and work out what that is. Let's switch from R and we go shift tan fraction 7 over 4 equals 60.26 degrees. So theta is equal to 60 comma 2, 3, sorry I've gone blank, 26 degrees, I was right, 60.26 degrees. There you go. So the whole of that is 60 comma 26 degrees. Okay. You could have very easily used the M and the B to get this answer and you would have got exactly the same answer if you'd been accurate. Um, I just tend to be a bit lazy when it comes to this type of thing because um, in the sense that I prefer to use the zeros if I can and the reason for that is because in my world back in the day we used to have limited calculator use in our exams so that's why I do it. Okay so now it says hands calculate COX. So we've got BOC do you agree? We've got BOC is equal to 23,39 degrees. All right, let me show you where that is. Let's use a highlighter. We've got that angle, right? We've just worked out the whole of this. So do you agree that COX is going to be the BOX, which we've just worked out, the BOX, which equals 60,26. And we're going to subtract it. So we're going to say, therefore, COX is the whole of that angle, which is BOX. Subtract BOC. Subtract BOC. Okay. So that's going to be 60,26 minus 23,39, which equals what? Okay, let's have a look. So that is 60.26 minus 23.39. Let's try again. <clears throat> minus 23.39 equals 36.87. So it equals 36,87. Oh, I don't know why it keeps doing this. I must fix it. 37.87 degrees. So this little angle here, let's change the highlighted color, shall we? This little angle there is equal to that angle there is equal to 36,87 degrees. Ah, excellent. Right, so now we've got that. Okay, now I'm going to just erase some stuff so that you can actually see what we're doing next. Grade 12s, if you're watching this live, or even, yeah, if you're watching this live and I erase something when you were still busy looking at it, please feel free to go and look at the recording. You get the recording in exactly the same way that you got to the live lesson and then you can watch the video and what's nice about it is obviously you can pause it or you could even um, rewind and watch it again so don't panic too much if you miss something yeah okay now let's change color let's go to purple 
Okay, so now we put that. Now it says determine the gradient of AB. Now the gradient of AB happens to be the same as the gradient of OC. Why? Because they told us this was a parallelogram and we know that these two sides are parallel. Therefore we can say, well, the gradient of AB is equal to the gradient of OC, right? But we can work out the gradient of OC, it's pretty easy. MOC is going to be given by the tan of theta. But in this case, theta is 36,87 degrees because that's how big that little angle is. So in fact, that shouldn't even be an arrow, it should be equals. Okay, so therefore we can say M OC is tan of 36,87 degrees. Therefore, let's have a look at it. We're going to do tan of 36,87 equals 0,75. So this gradient here, M of OC, which equals MAB, is 0,75. Right, excellent. Now they're asking for you to determine the coordinates of C. Okay, so let's think about this. Um, we know the x value of C. We know that BC is parallel to AO. Okay, do you agree? Because of the fact that it is parallel and AO is the y-axis, therefore BC must also be vertical. So for the x value is 4, but we don't know what the y value is. But they've asked us for the coordinates, so we can't just give the x value, we have to give the x value and the y value. So therefore we've got y is equal to mx plus c is the straight line, which represents any straight line actually, but we're now going to talk about OC. Do you agree it cuts at O? O, okay, therefore this is just a zero. No. So therefore we've got Y is equal to MX, okay? But we just worked out what this gradient was. We did, it was 0, 0,75, right? That was one of the points of this, was that we found out the gradient of this dude is 0, 0,75. So therefore Y is gonna be 0, 0,75X. Okay, cool. So now we've got equation for this line OC. So if we have the x value of 4, do you agree we can find the y value? Let's work it out. y is 3 over 4 multiplied by 4. Okay, because x value is 4. So therefore these cancel and the y value is 3. So therefore c is going to be the point 4, 3. 4, 3. Okay. Awesome. Now we can easily, very easily, determine the coordinates of A. Okay, because do you agree that A has to be the same length as BC? AO has to be the same length as BC. And do you agree that the X value here is obviously zero? So this is just a zero. Now we need... Oh, now we need to find the y value, the y value. But do you see that this point went from 3, y equals 3, to y equals 7? So how much did it go up by? It went up by 4, okay? It went up by 4 units. This has also got to go up by 4 units because they are not only parallel, but they're the same length. Because this thing is a parallelogram and opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal. So therefore we can say, well then it's pretty obvious that A is going to be four, right? Because three from seven is four units, so the length of this line is four, which means this is four as well. If you're struggling with that, we can work it out using the length formula. We could say the distance, oh, that pen's really cut, it's not really not gonna work, is it? Let's try this. The distance of CB equals the square root of x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared. Okay, 
So therefore we've got x2 minus x1 is 4 minus 4 is 0, so it's just 0, plus y2 is 7 minus y1, which is 3, all squared. So it's the square root of 7 minus 3 is 4 squared, which is just 4. So therefore you can see that that's definitely four units long. It doesn't, if, if it freaks you out that you're just looking at the horizontal, I mean the y values for this, then don't panic. You can just use the distance formula. It's really not a big deal. I know that a lot of my students prefer to just plug it into the formula and not, they freak a little bit. They have a bit of a nervous breakdown if they have to think a little bit, especially, and I don't mean that in a rude way, but especially if it's an exam situation, especially if it's a new work. So they feel more confident if they can plug it into a formula they know works, okay, and then look at it and then go, oh yes, obviously it's four because seven minus three is four. So there's nothing wrong with doing this if that's how you want to do it. Perfectly fine. Okay, so therefore the coordinates of A are going to be 0, 4, and again, grade 12s, please don't just write 4. Okay, it says coordinates for a reason. It's the X and Y coordinates. A number of students who lose marks drastically because of the fact that they stupidly do not write down both coordinates is just ridiculous. Please don't do that. Okay, let's do the next question. It says a circle with the center on C. Okay, so the X value is something but Y is zero. Okay, passes through the point, not four. Okay, and point B, eight naught. Okay, the tangents to circle at A and B intersected D. Okay, and these happen to be equal in length, just saying. The radius of the circle is five units. Okay, so the radius from there to there is five units. Okay, the first thing it says is determine the coordinates of the center C of the circle. Okay, well, I didn't mean to, but by doing that, I've actually realized that I've made this question quite easy. Because by saying that the radius is five units long, what we're saying is the distance from B to C is five units. Okay, right? So B is eight zero, and we want to know what C is. Well, C is five units to the left of B. So therefore, C has to be three zero. There you go. So that's three zero. Now it says they want the equation of the tangent AD. Hmm. So they want the equation of this tangent there. Okay, but now what do we know? We know, we know that the tangent is always perpendicular to the radius. So if I found the gradient of AC, if I found the gradient of AC, what is it going to be? It is going to be perpendicular to the gradient of AD, which means that we can get the gradient of AD. Okay, so that's what we're aiming for. We first have to find the gradient of AC. So let's do that. MAC is going to be Y2 minus Y1 over x2 minus x1. And again, grade 12s, I'd like to stress that you always, always, always um, choose, I mean, write down the formula that you've chosen. It just makes it easier for the teacher who's marking to see what you've done. Okay, remember the finals, they don't know who you are. It's not your teacher. In fact, your teacher is not even allowed to mark your textbooks, not allowed to be in the same room as your as your answer sheets. Okay, so there we go. So now I'm going to call this point two and this point one, just for fun. So therefore, it's going to be four minus zero over 0 minus 3, which is going to be negative 4 over 3, which is great because we expected a negative value because it's going up to the left. Therefore, the gradient of AD is what? It's the, it's the negative inverse. Remember that M1 multiplied by M2 is equal to negative 1. Therefore, M1 is equal to minus 1 over M2. So the M of AD, okay, the M of AD is going to be the negative, and then we're going to swap it, of negative 3 over 4, which is just 3 over 4. 
And again, you should be getting a positive gradient because of the fact that it slopes up to the right. Okay, so now we want to find the equation of this tangent. We want to find the equation of this tangent. Okay, so in that case, do you agree that we can say y is equal to 3 over 4 x plus c we need a point and happily we've got this point naught 4 in fact we don't even need to go any further because that's obviously the y cut so therefore our c is 4 so therefore the equation is y is 3 over 4 x plus 4 so there you go. So this equation is y is equal to 3 over 4x plus 4. Right, now they want the coordinates of d. Okay, so d is interesting because it is a point on this tangent. But this tangent is perpendicular to the radius. But the radius happens to be on the x-axis. Therefore, this is perpendicular to the y-axis, which means the x value is the same. The x value of d has to be the same as b. So we know the x value is 8. Now we need to find the y value. Okay. So do you agree we, this point here, 8, whatever, has to be common for both this equation and this line? So if I substitute x equal to 8 into that equation there, I should be able to get the y value. So let's do that. So we've got y equals 3 over 4 multiplied by 8 plus 4. So this cancels that and you're left with 2. So 3 times 2 is 6 plus 4, which equals 10. So there you go. The coordinates of d are 8 10. Okay. Right. Let's see how far we can get in this question in the next three, three minutes. Okay. It says this is a very nice question because it's got things like these lines. There's a midpoint, etc., etc. Okay. It says in the figure below, A, B, and C are points in the Cartesian plane. The first thing it says is determine the gradient of the line BC. So you can see there's definitely um, patterns that are being followed the whole way through. So if you know your formula and you know how to use them, then you're actually kind of sorted, okay? So it says determine the gradients of the line BC. Well, I'm going to call this point 2 and this point 1 because the equation we're going to use is y is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So y2 is going to be 4 minus y1, which is minus 2, over x2, which is 5, minus 8. So 4 plus 2 is 6, over 5 minus 8 is minus 3, which is going to be negative 2. And just to do a quick mental check, do you agree that it's sloping up to the left? So therefore, it is negative Okay, so therefore the gradient here, m equals negative 2. Now it says determine theta, the angle of inclination of line BC. So we know that tan theta is equal to m. Now what I always suggest to my students is to rather just put the positive value in. And then if you get the, if the positive value ends up being an acute angle, then you just subtract from 180. And if it ends up being an obtuse angle, then you've got that right angle. I mean, you've got the correct angle. Because the negative really just tells us about quadrants, okay? The two actually tells us about the size of the angle. So let's do that. So we're going to go theta is equal to second function of 2. And this is our last question we're going to be doing. So let's go through it. So we're going to go shift. Let's clear, shall we? Clear. Shift. Oh dear. Shift tan of 2 close bracket equals. And that's 63.43, which is obviously the acute angle there. So we just subtract 180. And you end up with 116.43. Point five seven. I don't worry about the minus. 
Okay, so it's 116.57. So therefore theta is 116,57 degrees. Okay, grade 12s, we will continue with analytical geometry and then move on to a paper one section. If any of you got any queries about any specific sections, then you're welcome to contact me via the um, to enable platform. Um, otherwise, I will decide and let you guys know. Have a great day.